Hello there, my name is Brandon and I make pictures out of tiny squares. And in this video, I'm going to be trying out a niche sort of subgenre of pixel art known as text mode art. Text mode is a display system used in old computers where rather than buffering every individual pixel position for a graphic or a block of text, there would instead be a limited set of predefined character tiles from which these elements were composed. In this way, it was just the computer having to string together a bunch of these tiles that it had available, which is a much more efficient use of limited memory than having to parse every single pixel of a display. Text mode art, then, is the use of this character tile system to create images and graphical elements. Before going any further, I should credit that I only became aware of text mode from my pal Polydux, who's been kind of like my ambassador and guru for this art form. And recently they created this fantastic breakdown of text mode on their website. Um, I'll put a link to this page below. It's a really interesting read and it's fun to learn how even in the overall umbrella of text mode, there are these subcategories that exist like Petsky, ANSI, and ASCII, um, which all refer to different varying restrictions based on the exact font, the color palette, uh, display dimensions, and the ability to rotate or flip the character tiles. In terms of actually making text mode art for yourself, uh, there are several editors that you can find collected on this page. And the one I ended up really having an easy time jumping straight into was this one called LevelLevel.com, which is a browser-based program with tons of predefined character sets and color palettes to use. Being that this will be my first step into text mode art, I decided to stick with the Commodore 64 character set and palette, um, which seemed to be the most classic approach. Though I'm going to create this in the text mode mode, which is like the Petsky mode, except it gives you the ability to also rotate and flip tiles, which I think is going to come in handy for a beginner like myself. And I'm also going to change my canvas size from the default of 40 by 25 tiles up to 40 by 32, which I'm doing because I had this idea that I'd make a little portrait of Mega Man, um, kind of like an interpretation of the character select portrait. And a value of 40 by 32 pixels would be more in line with the sizing used on the NES. Now, of course, the difference here is that the text mode canvas size is referring to tiles and not pixels. But to be honest, I had no idea how to actually start a text mode image. So what I'm doing just to generate some momentum here is just treating the tile grid as if it were pixel art. So at this point, it's just going to look like I'm making pixel art in a web editor, except each pixel here is actually a full 8x8 tile. And that potential is going to emerge once the foundation for the portrait has been established. Surprisingly, I felt right at home in this program. Uh, you've got all the tools that you'd expect with a pixel editor, uh, including selections, the lines, and shape tools. Um, there's an undo and a redo, and you can even have uh, different layers if you want to have layers too. So I just kind of kept working through this to lay down the initial pixel art. And I have a little Mega Man figure by my desk, so that was serving as a bit of a live reference. And this first phase here was also just nice for getting accustomed to the Commodore 64 color palette as well which I've never used before, but I ended up feeling like it was kind of similar to the Pico 8 palette in a sense. Um, not in terms of saturation, of course, but there are kind of similar relationships between the colors and also in it just being limited to only 16 colors total as well. Eventually I arrived at this, um, which I was reasonably happy with as being kind of the pixel art foundation for this piece. So my next step was to start introducing the more interesting character tiles. And the first thing I started with was to do a lap around the piece uh, with this angle tile to kind of connect up all these little pixel corners and sort of smooth out the silhouette. With all the angled connections, uh, it starts to kind of take the appearance of having run this through a pixel art upscaler in a sense. And you start to get a feel for the level of finer shaping and details that are possible when inserting different kinds of tiles from the character set. When continuing to render and explore the tiles, uh, part of the fun is this strategy of like looking at the drawing and planning out some contour or shading that you want to achieve, and then hunting down the right tile uh, or combo of tiles that you can use to accomplish that. You get to learn to be pretty resourceful with them, although inevitably one of the things that emerges from being adhered to this strict tile selection is that there's this slight element of glitchiness to the appearance um, that's almost intrinsic to the art form itself. Um, like you can do pretty well with the alignments if you wanted to just adhere to a lot of the same tiles. Like if you used a lot of just the 45 degree corner, for example, it'd be a pretty clean look. But I found it to be a lot more fun to start to embrace some of these imperfections rather than trying to run from them. One of the things that surprised me in this way was that the checkerboard dither tile isn't actually a one by one pixel checkerboard. Um, rather, it uses a pattern of two by two pixels to create it. 
So from a distance, it can sort of trick your eye into thinking that there are these mixed pixel sizes occurring. But at a certain point, this also doesn't even really matter because there's enough going on elsewhere with the proportioning of various pixel thicknesses within the cells that it essentially just all kind of blends together to create this overall unique text mode appearance. The cool thing is that this can be sort of like doing regular pixel art, especially the way that I've kind of set up my piece here, except that you now have the ability to fine tune the individual look of a single pixel. So it's great for creating fine divisions or textures within a cell and not really having to commit to the size and weight of a full pixel in that spot as you would have had to if this were traditional pixel art. Um, sort of like getting to have a superpower, albeit a very specific and pixel based one. So further on in the rendering, I started getting a better feel for the potential here. And I'd go through and replace a lot of the solid tiles with ones that had some sort of line or texture in them. And I'd use these various two color combos to create the effect of colored highlights along the helmet, um, which also helped just add more vibrancy to the piece by introducing small pops of color everywhere. One of the last things I did was to create a border around the portrait. And I kept it away from the edge by using a tile that's half black and half blue and then I tried to improvise some corner detailing on top of that. I ended up having to increase the canvas dimensions just to make sure that the portrait was centered here. And then the final piece were these strings of binary text behind the portrait, uh, which provided just a bit of a backdrop and some nice texture as well. I eventually dotted in more pops of color in the binary. And so this is the result of my first experiment into the world of text mode. I had a blast exploring this art style and like I said, it sort of felt like doing regular pixel art, except now each pixel just gets to have that little modifier detail about it. And you know, it's rewarding to figure out these different ways to create details, um, like how there's this little combo for a subtle upturned crease at the corner of the mouth, uh, you know, or like stepping the color divide within a tile to create a slight curve. There's this sort of problem solving element about this stuff that lets you bring some individuality to a piece. I also wanted to mention that in terms of finishing and exporting, this uh, editor also has the option to export with different effects, uh, like there's CRT scan lines and glow, um, which you can even fine tune the strength of. But in general, it was just a really awesome discovery once I finished, so this like editor kind of blew me away. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and take the Mattia CRT results, uh, which I really like the look of, and pump it through my actual CRT just to see what happens. Uh, so thanks for joining me to explore this one. Um, be sure to check out Polyduck's site if you're looking for a portal into this world of text mode art. And thank you for watching and take care and keep it square. <laughs>